shoo, wa shoo shoo, wa shoo wa. I've got my baby here by the sea. With my guitar, I'm strumming out a soft melody. This is the night. If you don't fight, young romance. Shoo shoo, wa shoo shoo, wa shoo wa. We built a fire here for our light. Now we find we'd rather have the darkness of the night. The stars that shine will help us find young romance. Young romance. The rhythm of the surging tide. The scented ocean spray. With you so close, it's hard to hide the words I'm longing to say. Me and my baby, we're gonna be making love in stars above beside the rolling sea. And as we grow old, our hearts will hold your romance. Pleasure. I'm never too busy to help a little lady in distress. Is your, uh, your first day? Uh, yeah, yes. Are you uh, from Los Angeles? No, I'm a country girl from Versailles. Oh. I have gloves when you're carrying those around. I suppose I should. Mr. Bigelow. Oh, it's the manager of my department. I'll see you around, though, okay? Okay. Sheer magnificence, isn't he? He was just helping me. Yeah, he's helping. Only wise up hammer sign first. This hammer? She's old enough to be his mother. Not exactly the relationship. Boss lady's got the upper hand, so why stick your neck out? Hi. Oh, hi. How'd you, uh, how'd you like your first day? Oh, I guess it was all right. Bye. Hey, uh, wait a minute, why, uh, poison or something? No. Not exactly. And look, I know that there's a lot of uh, loose chatter that goes on around here. Now, please don't believe it all, all right? Oh, I, um, I got you those gloves. Thank you very much. How, how do you get home? Bus. Good. Listen, I would like to drive you, but I'm afraid I've got a rush. I've got to get to night school. <laughs> Most of the fellows just think about dates at night. Uh, engineering and uh, well, you are ambitious. I try to be. Uh, well, goodbye. I'll see you around. What took you so long? I had to finish up. Huh? You're real conscientious. I'm glad you noticed. You know, I want to do a good job for my boss. Uh, what are we going to do tonight? We'll go to my place. There's a TV show I want to catch. Well, that's fine. I mean, you know, all I want to do is make you happy, darling. Thank you. 
Reminds me, I better get moving. I'm sorry. It's all right. You busy Sunday? No, I guess not. Oh, how about the beach? Well, are you sure it would work out? Ernie's a nice guy if you let him be. Maybe he'll come along. Could be. I think his headlights went a little dim when he saw me. If it isn't Ernie, we'll get you someone else. Could you bring along something? How about coconut cake? That'll be fine. Gonna bake it yourself? No, my mother. Make it a big one. Sure. Say, baby, I, uh, I guess I ought to tell you, things aren't quite the same here as they are in uh, Visalia. We aren't quite the uh, cake and ice cream type. See you later, Donna. baby here by the sea with my guitar I'm strumming out a soft melody this is the night if you don't fight young romance we'd build a fire here for our life now we find we'd rather have the darkness of the night the stars that shine will help us find young romance the rhythm of the surging tide the scented ocean spray with you so close it's hard to hide the words I'm longing to say. Me and my baby, we're gonna be making love near stars above beside the rolling sea. And as we grow old, our hearts will hold young romance. Got a late start and got kind of hung up with the gang down the beach. Hmm. Uh, Dee, meet everybody. What lovely hair. Peroxide? <laughs> That's my girl. Uh, what happened to Nick? I got a musical impulse. Have some beer, Ernie. Oh, thanks. Here you go, Dee. How about you? Mm, no, thanks. She don't smoke, drink, or nothing. What do you do for kicks? Oh, read Schopenhauer and Spinoza <laughs> and help bake coconut cakes. Yeah, she does. Yeah, well, hey, Guitar, why don't you come on down with us? We've got a full tank down there. Yeah, hey, let's all go. Okay, Ernie. Okay. Coming, Betty. Uh, thanks. I'll stay here if you don't mind. Well, hey, don't worry about me. I'm hogtied. Better come along, honey. If you don't like this, we'll feed you something stronger. Warm you up. I don't think it would work. If you change your mind, you know where you can find it. Let's go. are down the beach a ways. They'll be back. No, no, no. I mean, do you have a date? <clears throat> Are you cold? 
Oh, I'm all right. What's the matter? I, I, I think I got too much sun. I think that you need somebody around to take care of you. How did you know I was here? Well, the gang usually hangs out here. It's sort of the poor man's beer reaps. Not Miss Hammers? Gee, your skin is even too hot to touch. Come on, I'll fix it up. Oh, well, that, that isn't mine. Well, so you're gonna, somebody going to sue you? <laughs> well, I, I can uh, do no, it. No, 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 you're the patient. Oh, but no, I, no, I listen, I now, even... Dr. Bigelow takes no nonsense from the patients. Velvet touch. Huh? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sting, does it? Mm -mm. Good. Now, you don't want that stuff to stain your shoulder straps, do you? Are you going to stay down here with the kids, or what? Oh, we'll probably be going back soon. What for? We came out early. Well, I've got a much better idea. Why don't we drive up the coast? I'm not even going to miss you. Oh, I couldn't. Why, do you have a late date waiting for you at home? I don't go in much for that sort of thing. Well, I have. But with you, it's not the same. I shouldn't, really. Don't you want to come? Yes. Well, then it's settled. Come on. We'll change in the car. was a filling station operator. And my mother worked and still does in a, in a beauty parlor. Now, I guess she decided that we'd have more opportunities here than in Visalia, so we came here. You finished high school, I suppose? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I guess mother always had big ideas for me and kind of kept me wrapped in cotton. Maybe you ought to get unwrapped. about your night school and your engineering. Well, there's not much to tell. I'm working my way, trying to prove I don't need my father's dough. I don't want to be just a rich man's son. I want to get there on my own. That's certainly commendable. Maybe I should go to night school and take up some sort of profession. No, no you don't need that kind of education. I think we'd better be going back. Well, we certainly haven't been going forward. Go. I better be going in now. Would you like to have my phone number? I'll see you around. I suppose you think I'm an awful baby. No, you grow up. We all do. Well, good night. Come here. My phone number is, is Normandy 59032. Hey, bro. 
Romeo. What's bothering you? Better get on that telephone quick if you know what's good for you. Did you tell her I was sitting up with a sick friend? Six different times. She says if you don't get the car back to her, she'll have the law on you. Ah, uh, don't worry, Venus. I think I can handle her. I'm getting sick and tired of her calling up here at all hours. If it keeps up, you can look for another place. Darling, I've been trying to reach you all evening. Well, you'll have your car back there tomorrow. I'm fired. Listen, Wrinklepuss, for the services that I've rendered your department, believe me, dear, I was underpaid anyway. How much? A dime. Huh? Hello? Hello, Linda. Yes? This is Don Bigelow. Remember me? Uh, I just got back from Europe and I called you the first thing. Now, we met at the zebra room. Oh, I knew something was missing from my life. Uh, what are you doing Saturday or Sunday? Well, this weekend is out. A bunch of us are going skin diving off Ted de Havilland's boat. Well, I don't mind a crowd if you don't. You sweep me off my feet. Oh, come on. Do you have skin diving gear? Yes, but I left it on uh, Dad's yacht at Monte Carlo. I need some new gear anyway. Well, incidentally, I brought you back your favorite perfume. Joy. Well, do you think I'd forgotten? I'll call you Friday, dear, all right? Meanwhile, would you dream of me? Okay. Bye-bye, sweetheart. Aphrodite? How much? Two hundred bucks. Grow up, Sonny. All right, a dime. I wonder what would happen if you ever found one you couldn't smear up like all the others you touch. And they cut my throat. happened to see us together. Oh, don't worry about her. She never mingles with the help. I'm actually glad that she fired me from this. Mm. Oh, something. It's kind of old-fashioned. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, yes. In my family, the oldest son always gets that. It's lovely. It's yours. Thank you. Perhaps someday you could maybe give it to your oldest son. Gee, that new job that I told you about is really going to be great, you know. When does it start? In uh, just a couple of weeks now. Oh. About two more weeks? Listen, if you're worried about that loan, I can wire my folks. Oh, oh no, Don. Does your mother know about it? No, she hasn't even asked about my paychecks yet. I wrote to my folks a couple of days ago as one of my savings bonds. Oh. They'll be here in a couple of days. Oh, you more. shouldn't have. Well, it's just I really don't like to owe money to anybody, even my parents. Well, I understand Otherwise, that. I wouldn't be working my way. I could just ask them for a blank check and, you know, yes. fill it in. Listen, if you feel that, that the money is. Don, I don't. This thing is very difficult, you know, but. What? Well, I. What's the matter? Do you think that you could manage to give me this week's paycheck just until the bonds get here and this oh, pinch gets Donna, off? Oh, of course. Come. 
Do you have a pen? Yeah, sure. With anyone else, this would be so embarrassing, you know. With you, it just... I don't know. Here. Thank you. When I get those bonds, I'm going to take a night off from studies, and we are really going to do this town. Do you know what I'd like even better? What's that? If you'd come to our house for dinner. Mother keeps asking. I would rather be alone with you, you know that. Just this once. Okay, Sunday, all right? Oh, yes. I gotta get going now. I'm gonna get to class or now. I can get a bite later. Do you think you'll have time to walk me to the bus after work? Gee, I'm afraid I'll be late. Oh. But Sunday. Oh, yes. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Miss Miller, will you see me in the morning? Yes. Are you sure it's season right, Ma? He's only a stock boy. I told you, he's getting a job in the work he's preparing for, engineering. Your father was always preparing for a career, too. He spent his life in a gas station. Now, don't you want to meet him? I want to meet him. I want to know what kind of people you're meeting down at the store. Perfect. <laughs> Even for a stock boy. And I bet his salary isn't a bit more than yours. Ma. Yes? I was fired. You what? Well, Miss Hammer didn't seem to think I could do the work. Well, maybe it's just as well. You're not angry? Uh, this came today from Marty Norton. He wants me to come back and take charge of the beauty shop as his partner. Are you going to? Yes. Are you thinking of marrying Mr. Norton? Well, I have a right to some happiness and companionship. Well, of course you do, Mama. It's about time you stopped thinking about well, me all the time. What chances are for me here? Just another beauty well, shop sure, operator. sure, I understand It'll that. It'll be nice for you, too. Marty's very fond of you. Do you expect me to go back with you? Oh, did you think I'd leave you down here by yourself? Oh, Mama, I don't want to go back. Oh, you'll be better off back home. It's a good thing you haven't cashed your checks. We're going to need them now, getting moved and all. What's wrong? You've got them, haven't you? Well, have you? No. Well, tell me what you've done with those checks or there'll be no dinner, boyfriend or no boyfriend. Mama, I, I loaned the money to Don. You what? He's going to pay it back just as soon as his bonds arrive. Besides that, his parents are very rich and that'll give him anything he wants. Mama, please, please don't say anything to Don. Hello, Don. Hi. Who is the prettiest girl I know? for your mother. Oh, fine. I want you to meet Mother. Mother, this is Don. Mrs. Miller, I'm pleased to meet you. I'm pleased to meet you. I uh, had anticipated meeting a much older woman. Daughters usually make their mothers out as old hags. <laughs> mother, Don brought you some candy. It's uh, nothing much, just... Looks expensive. You're very generous. Mother, please, you promised. When a man begins by taking money from a young girl, I have a pretty good idea how he usually ends up. Don, I had to tell her about the checks. Oh, I'm glad you've shown me what kind of a family I might have gotten into. You'll excuse me.
Betty. You don't understand. I understand only too well. Go get ready for bed. We're leaving tomorrow, if possible. I'm not going. Folks uh, prefer Florida. Now, me, I... I prefer any place. Just as long as you're there. Aren't you ever serious? Yes, I'm serious enough to come down to Palm Springs and meet your parents. Careful, I might take you up on it. And after we meet them, we could sneak away, drive to Las Vegas. To gamble? Well, some call it gambling. A marriage license. You are a gambler, aren't you? And not only on the stock market. No, I don't consider you a gamble, darling. I'm sure my folks will approve of you. Besides, they think it's time I settle down anyway. Mine too. I'll phone you later. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, you better pack a dinner jacket. Why, what? Well, there'll probably be some black tie affairs there, you know. Oh, yes, of course. Bye. Bye. One delivery this morning, this gal just kept standing in the doorway, smiling. Finally, she says, what am I telling you for? Oh, come on, cut it out. Hey, well, who didn't love her, boy? Come back to see how the poor people make a living? Oh, it's very funny, very funny. Oh, who's the Cafe Society doll I caught you riding with? Some car and some doll. Has she got a sister? Well, what possible difference could it make to a couple crumbs like you? Well, we want to better ourselves socially. Was she junior league? Uh, yeah, and then some. So that's how you spend your time these days, huh? Can you think of something better? What's it going to get you? A rich wife. A little help from you guys. Listen, I need 200 bucks to get us to Las Vegas, and I'll give you 400 back, all right? 600. Losing check at the cashiers. I, I have to come back tomorrow. What is it? You look worried. Don, if it's about us, I'm not going back with Mother. I'm going to look for another job. No job doesn't matter. Not it. What is it? It's the apartment. What apartment? Ours. Well, we drive down to Tijuana and type the knot down, and we come back, and your mother couldn't take you away. Oh, Don. We won't have to worry about a thing now, No, no, we? you don't understand. I gave him a check for the first and last month's rent. I gave him the lease on the place. I had to give him 200 bucks on the check. Couldn't you have found a cheaper place? I didn't know these bonds were going to show up. Y your father didn't send them? Yes, he sent them. They'll show up eventually. It's just that they're not here now, and there's no check well, is out. Can't you ask him to hold it? Yes. I, I went down there and made a deposit, and I went to the bank, and they're closed. And it's just no soap. Everything happens at once. Do you understand what will happen if a check bounces with the district attorney? You know what that means? My landlady called me and she says they're trying to find me already. Oh, surely you could explain to There's them. There's no such thing as explanations or excuses. I've got to get 200 bucks and I've got to get it fast. There, there, there must be something I can do. Yeah, there is. Do you really want to help me? Really? You know I do. Anything. Okay, then.
a man across the street with a gun train on us. The money in this bag. I don't see any man. He's in one of those cars. Put the money in the bag. Hurry up. Don't you like our exclusive society? Don't try to put on any airs with me. We're all sisters under the skin. Don't try to tell me no different. I hear you're related to practically everybody, Elsie. Don't you wish you was a member of the human race? My, ain't we the fragile type? Would you please leave me alone? Maybe you'd like a private cell. Why don't you turn over your personal maid to her, Elsie? I just might do that. Wouldn't you like a few special privileges? No, thank you. Open. Close. Hello again, you dolls. Well, it looks like old home week. Remember me, Gertie? I've done my best to forget. Yeah, she looks like she might be a good recruit for your charm school. Get lost. That crumb been giving you a bad time, honey? No, not exactly. No, we was getting on like bosom pals, cozy-like, wasn't we, honey? First time in, honey? A little scared, huh? Ah, we all get scared at first. Don't let her throw you. What are they holding you for? I helped hold up a theater. Well, you can't even hold up your chin. But never admit a thing like that. Simply say you're accused. We didn't use a gun or anything. Save it for the judge. You got bail? No, but they let me call my mother. Oh. I thought maybe you were alone. Well, I, I don't have any friends here. From out of town? Visalia. Visalia. You got a lot of personality, honey. You could go places under the right management. Ever hear of Gertie's strip town? That's me. I got connections, honey. Things don't turn out right for you. Get in touch with me. Either way, get in touch with me. Understand? Okay, Gertie. You're sprung. Took a little long this time. My lawyer's a shyster, but he knows his way around. Oh, easy, honey. Nothing so bad it couldn't be worse. Won't surprise me if they let you off on probation. At least the money was restored intact. You've never been in trouble before. The probation department considers that important. Are you willing, am I right, Mrs. Miller, to take Betty back in your home in Visalia for any period of probation the judge determines? That's correct. You realize this will probably be a period of at least five years? Yes. 
Although you'll be living with your mother, Betty, we can't ask her to provide for you. You'll be expected to find a decent job and pay your own way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, we try to make probation terms that can be lived by. Sometimes circumstances make it necessary for us to be severe. I'm speaking of your relationship with Don Bigelow. Before recommending probation, we're going to ask you to make a decision. The judge is adamant about this. We must have your solemn promise you'll have no further association or contact in any manner with that boy. You agree? Well, Betty. I agree. I think you'll find in time you've made a wise choice. That means I'm getting a bum probation report, huh? That's putting it real gently. What does that mean? Society doesn't deserve the privilege of your company. You're headed for the county work farm, and I couldn't care less. And Betty goes scot-free, I suppose. Undoubtedly, she'll be placed on probation. At least she won't be mixed up by you any longer. Now you've got it wrong. Every time I won't be mixed up by her. That's all. something in here about us. Listen to this. Mrs. Harold Miller and her charming daughter, Betty, who returned to Visalia, will make it their permanent home. Betty! <laughs> Betty, honey! Betty! something, Mother. Say something. How long have you known? How long have you known? Mother, I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. distance call to Los Angeles. Well? Okay, I'll marry her. I mean, who knows? I might make a model husband. You understand there'll be certain provisions. Uh-huh. I knew there'd be a catch. Not necessarily. If you go through with a the marriage, they'll modify the sentence. But you'll still be in my charge on probation. Nobody's taking any chances, are they? Take it or leave it. Listen, I'll take it, believe me. I thought you would.
medicamentos. Can I take you for some coffee, Mrs. Miller? Oh, yes, of course. We'll be back shortly. I guess we might as well sit down. I'm sorry things happened this way. Why be sorry? I think it's working out fine. I mean, our, our having to get married. What are you complaining? You're getting yourself a husband, I'm getting out of jail. I think that's a pretty good deal all the way around. You don't have to marry me. Really? It's not the way I heard it. What was the way you heard it? That I would serve every last day of that sentence unless I... I... Huh, what a choice. You really mean that? What do you want me to do? Put my hand on the wedding Bible and oh, swear to... What? something I won't be giving to my eldest son. Uh. Well, how was it, honey? Oh, you were wonderful. <laughs> Smile can get you a lot of things used on the right people. But I'm afraid there isn't much you can do around here in your condition. Well, maybe we can think of something. Gertie, I don't want to have this baby. I figured. What you're looking for costs a lot of dough, honey. You got it? Hello. Oh, lucky try. Still got the same number. Usually you birds move around a lot. This is Gertie. Same trouble. One of my new girls. Didn't her mother ever tell her anything? Oh, cut out the wisecracks. I've got a show to do in a couple hours. Let's get down to business. Is she hot? Lukewarm. A probationer. In violation? Not yet. Well, as soon as she's one of your girls. Okay. Who pays? Look, this is Gertie. Well, you know where she's to meet me. Yep. Give the doc my regards. Hmm, that's right. You haven't seen him lately. You got nothing to worry about, honey.
Sit down over there. Nothing to be frightened about. If you knew she was nervous, why didn't you give her a sedative to relax her? I don't want to be around here all day. He's one of Gertie's girls. You want me to cancel out? When I want your suggestions, I'll ask for them. Why are you doing that? Let's say I'm a little choosy about my patients, dear. I don't take any chances. Is it dangerous? Not a thing to worry about, dearie. You have to stop shaking. I can't do my work. She's too nervous. Give her that double sedative. Make it strong. And call me when she's ready. Just into a dream world, dearie. No. It's not mine to kill. It's not mine to kill. Makes it official. Our home is supported largely by what we receive from the adopting foster parent. For that reason, we are reluctant to admit unwed expectant mothers with police records. But I see no reason why we shouldn't make an exception in your case in view of what Mr. Curtis has told us of the circumstances. Thank you. There are no excuses. I noticed that your father died when you were quite young. Yes. Why? No reason. Although your mother's making weekly payments, there will be a certain amount of work assigned to you. You'll find we have no special privileges here. I didn't expect any, Mrs. Horton. No, of course not. Well, I'll show you to your dormitory. You should find it very easy to adjust to our daily routine here. Oh, and incidentally, that doctor you went to. The police just arrested him and his nurse. Seems a young girl died there last month. Uh, which one of these beds was Karen's? This one, Mrs. Horton. I... I didn't notice you, Karen. I expect you'd been gone. I, I thought I'd wait until tomorrow. Yes, I know. I, I thought... I made it clear to you that we had to have your bed. Diane, uh, Luella, this is Betty. Help her get acquainted, won't you, please? Hi. Hi. Welcome to the slave quarters. Looks very comfortable. A regular working girl's dormitory. Sure. We're working our way through. Yeah, just like college. Only here they don't let you keep your diploma. They uh, gave her baby away this morning. Don't mind me. It's just something I ate. Well, look, I don't want to take your bed away. I can sleep on a couch till tomorrow. Uh-uh. Rules are rules. Where will you go? Oh, I'll find a place. No family? Mm -mm, not anymore. <laughs> you should have heard my old man. What about the baby? 
he's taken care of. Well, goodbye. Sorry to be leaving on such short acquaintance. Good luck. That's for somebody else. You'll get used to it, sis. Sense of humor helps. You're crazy. Blown a fuse or something. Betty, you went to school. You've got an education. You tell her. What are you, a nut or something? Does it make me a nut simply because I want to keep my baby and raise it normally? Normally? Is that what you think it'll be? Shut up. Look, I, I was reading one of those psychology books in the library. It says the kids can get all kinds of complexes if they aren't raised in the proper environment. Well, that it shows up later, right? Well, yeah, I guess so. Well, no kid of mine's going to have any complexes if I can help it. Listen to her, will you? Talking about something she don't even understand. How do you spell complexes? Maybe I have something you'll never have. Mother instinct. And maybe I got more of that than you. Maybe that's why I'm willing to give up my baby. Am I right, Betty? I really don't know. Look, stop driving on the white line. What side are you on, anyway? Mrs. Horton feels that our babies will have a better chance in life if they're placed up for adoption. Look, that's how Mrs. Horton feels. Now, how do you feel? I want to do what's best for my baby. Well, it isn't Mrs. Horton's baby. It's yours. Look, don't you have a mind of your own? Stop riding her. Maybe you have a few opinions. For one thing, what are we yapping about what we're going to do with something we ain't even got yet? Well, maybe some of us think. But you wouldn't know about that, would you? Because to think, you've got to have something to think with. <laughs> Why, you... I prefer my celery served on a plate, girls. What do you think about it, Reverend Benton? Shouldn't a girl keep her own baby and not give it away? It's your baby. It's your life. So it's your own decision. What if some of us aren't sure which is the best decision? Well, I'm not the Almighty. I'm not wise enough to know which is right for all of you, or even one of you. I wished I were. Betty! Um, Mrs. Horton wants to see you in her office. What for? Well, how should I know? She said to hurry. Come in. Sit down, Betty. Betty, you know people are pretty concerned with heredity and things like that, so it's been a slight problem in your case because of your record, but we have found a couple. Oh. And uh, they're past our usual age requirements, but I... Well, I think they're a great solution for you. Good. What are they like? Well, they're, they're ranch people, not, not too far from where you grew up. Oh, fine. We're not supposed to bring the mother into contact with the prospective parent, but uh, I, I'm going to break that rule. Well, I just want them to get rid of their doubts by seeing you, you know, talking oh, to you. Yes, I understand. Betty, you understand that the home is maintained by private donations. Now, people like Mr. and Mrs. Polly have the means to help us a great deal, so that, in turn, we can help other girls who have a similar problem as yours. Well, of course. It's very important that you make a good impression. Can I count on you? Certainly. They have the right to look me over if they want to. Send the polys in, please. You should sit down, my dear. <clears throat> well, 
You look like a nice, healthy girl. I'm sure Betty would answer any questions you would like to know. John? Well, it's like this. For years, my wife and I have worked long and hard together to make a sorry piece of property into something worthwhile. John, she doesn't want to hear about that. My husband's getting you confused. We sold out a few years ago, and, well, we got quite a bit of money. And now we have this nice little ranch, 200 acres. Well, it would seem as if Betty were interviewing you instead of you interviewing her. <laughs> well, we'd just like her to understand how he was situated. We do know how to raise a child. We had one of our own, Joey. Then there was the war. Well, it's lonely when there's no one. I understand that you were concerned about my criminal record, that my baby might inherit some of my traits. Well, I have to admit we were a little afraid of it. But now we've met you, I'm certain we have nothing to worry about. And we hope it'll be a boy. Well, I certainly do my best. Would you excuse me? Did I say something wrong? No, I... She's under an emotional strain. Goodbye, Luella. Bye. Well, it's almost as if it never happened. Except you're going away with a little more than you arrived with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel very good about the whole thing, though. Just to be on the safe side, all of us... Betty, take over. Well, I'm certainly not very good at making speeches, but... the girls elected me to give you this. What is it? Something real useful. A wedding ring? Well, it'll be easier on you, we figured, if you're Mrs. Howard. And it'll make it easier on your kid when he starts school. This is very thoughtful of you kids. Thanks. We almost got it engraved, Luella and Robert. Why Robert? You named the baby after the father, didn't you? I wouldn't name one of our cats after him. Well, anyhow, you should get it engraved, just to make things look right. All right, I will. And with Robert, since <laughs> all of you had the idea. And you ought to know what he's like, in case people ask questions. Let's fix her up with a real dreamboat. I can see him clear as anything. Six foot two, gorgeous hunk of man. Blue eyes, blonde hair. A Navy man lost at sea. Why not a flyer? A test pilot. Yeah, he broke the sound barrier and flew into outer space. A banker. An oil millionaire. A field tycoon. With offices in every capital of the world. Castles in Spain. Huck kid? Where do you want him to be, Luella? I just want him to be an ordinary guy. Ordinary looks, ordinary job. One who could fall in love with an ordinary girl like me for the rest of his life. This ring, Ivy wet. For better or for worse, for richer. Shut up! <laughs> you making a habit of looking out windows? No, it's a nice night. What's that? I'm no owl. It's from my mother. She got married again. Well, that makes the two up on us, doesn't it? And she just wanted me to understand that I couldn't bring the baby there. Well, why get upset? You've got it all settled for Junior, green pastures with the Paulies. If that really is their name. They don't usually give their real name, do they? Can't prove it by me. 
The guy that landed me here gave me a phony name. You know, I used to go hunting with my dad a lot. We had a bird dog named Katie. She got ill and was in so much pain, Dad had to put her to sleep. Cried like a baby. Ever see a man cry? My Uncle Ben, when he gets asked to the eyes. <laughs> anyway, we had to go looking for another one. Dad finally found one that was gonna have pups. He kept looking her over. Just like the Pollys kept looking at me. Guess they wanted to be sure of a good pup, too. Well, at least I don't have to supply them with a good pedigree. Look, six months from now, you'll forget it ever happened. Sure. Start off in some new town, fresh and innocent as they come. Oh, about the two of us trying our luck together. <laughs> Only that innocent pin on me, it shows. No, that's, that's not a bad... Hey! Somebody call Mrs. Horton. You better phone the doctor. I think Betty's early. Oh, don't anybody ever have a oh. baby in the daytime? Receiving visitors? Oh, excuse me. That's all right, I was just leaving. Like a boy, Diane. Well, if you can do it, so can I. You decided on a name yet? Roger. Why? I don't know. I just like it. Roger? Pretty good. That's what the flyers say when everything's okay. Yeah. I never thought of that. Sort of significant. Maybe everything's going to be okay for him. It will be. Come in. You sent for me, Mrs. Horton? Uh, yes, Betty. There's a few formalities that we have to finish up. Sign this paper for me, please. Well, you can sign it right here. You know, Betty, the Pollies have been very liberal with us. A check they gave us will take care of 20 girls, maybe more. What's the trouble, Betty? I won't do it. I thought we made an agreement. I, I thought that you agreed to do this. I did. But it was wrong. Is it? That check they gave you. It's as if they were buying my child. Betty, you're an emotionally unstable girl. If you weren't, you wouldn't be facing this problem now. Are you going to let your own selfishness stand in the way of a financial security for your baby? A chance to have a good home, a good education, a good future? Well, are you? What about a mother's love? If you decide to keep your baby, what can you really offer him? Blank space on the birth certificate. The opportunity to be called a lot of nasty, vile names. A mother who has to act as both parents when she'll be so busy earning a living she won't have time to be one. 
don't worry about my child. Well, Betty, I wouldn't if you would just place him in a proper well, home. Well, my home is the proper oh, home. Oh, who are you to stand there and tell me what is right and wrong? Oh, your actions so far is wrong. For you to talk. You don't know what it's like. You sit so safe and sound and sure of yourself on the other side of the I was once on the other side of that. On the other side of that desk, 11 years ago. You had a child. There never was a Mr. Horton. But I had a child, yes. I didn't know. Nobody does. You never regretted your decision? A million times. But I know my decision was the right one for my baby. Horton says I was to introduce myself. She had to go away. Hmm. I'm Mary Ellen. I'm Betty. Oh, you're Betty. I guess I'm supposed to take your bed. Oh. Yes, I suppose you are. All the other girls will help you when they get back. Thanks. Uh, so long. Good luck. Well, I guess I may as well say goodbye now, Anne. Betty, Betty, <laughs> I ask you to wait upstairs. They're taking my Betty, face. Betty, we're just trying to make it They're easier for you. My let me go. Let me go. Reverend Benton, please, please. They've got my baby and they mustn't take him away. Please help me. Read on, Betty. We've signed the papers. If you're worried about the money that you gave to Mrs. Horton, I'll pay it back. Every cent of it, I promise. We're not worried about the money, Betty. We're worried about you. How are you going to care for the child? How will you manage? I, I'll work. I'll work very hard. I'll manage. But, Betty, don't you see that what you're trying to do is... But, Reverend Benton, I can't do it. It isn't right. It's my baby. No. 
Oh, it's mine. Martha. Martha. It would look silly, people our age, being called mama and papa to a new baby, wouldn't it? Martha, wouldn't it? I guess you're right. After all, he is your baby, Betty. May I hold him for just a moment longer? You think I'm wrong, don't you? To love others is never wrong. Thank you. I'm sorry. It is yours, Betty. Joey was mine. I just got a little lonely for him. Joey had lived, he would have married a girl like Betty. Mm -hmm. 